Welcome back guys. So we are going to talk about the pathophysiology of congestive cardiac failure. So we looked at the definition of congestive cardiac failure and the predisposing factor and the types of heart failure. So please, if you haven't watched that video, find time to watch it. So looking at the pathophysiology of congestive cardiac failure, we need first to understand the normal physiology about the flow of the heart how does blood flow to the heart and to the and from and to the heart okay so let's first draw the heart okay so you know that this is actually the left side of the heart and the left side of the heart it has got some uh this is the valve and this is the left side of the heart okay we also have got the valve here Okay, so now when you look at the left, uh, this upper chamber of the left side of the heart, this upper chamber of the left side of the heart, so we are saying this is the aorta, okay, and these are pulmonary veins, okay, so the right side of the heart, we also have, got, we also have the upper chamber, okay, have the, the upper chamber So we are saying that this is the heart, and when you look at the heart, uh, it has got some layers as well. This is the pericardium, okay? This is the pericardium, which is the outermost layer. Um, and this middle one, the one we are shading in black, it's known as the myocardium, the middle layer. And of course, you know, the innermost layer, it is the endocardium, okay? So this is the myocardium, which is the heart muscle. So we are saying that this, it, this chamber, it is what we are calling as the left atrium, where it drains blood into this, which we are calling as, uh, oh, sorry, this is the right atrium. It's draining blood into the right ventricle. Okay, it's bringing blood, the deoxygenated blood, let's use blue. It's bringing the deoxygenated blood into this one, which we are calling as the right ventricle. Okay, so this right ventricle is going to contract and pump up blood. And this blood to go to the right lung as well as to the left lung. So let us take it to the lungs. Okay, let us as well draw the lung so that we understand the pathophysiology of congestive cardiac failure okay so this is the blood vessel and this blood vessel it's going to the lung and we are saying that this blood vessel this is what we are calling as the pulmonary artery so this pulmonary artery when it reaches the lung it's going to actually uh, bifurcate into small or minute uh, blood vessel which we are calling as uh, arterioles, pulmonary arterioles. Then from the pulmonary arterioles, it will form capillaries. Okay, there will be capillaries which are actually going to be formed. Um, let's say like this. Like that, like this. So these are capillaries that have actually been formed. These are capillaries, and you know the capillary drains into this pulmonary vein, which is actually carrying the oxygenated blood to the lung. Okay, and of course we have the alveoli, although it has no plate in the. 
congestive cardiac failure. So now what's happening is that this is the deoxygenated blood which is going to the lungs for oxygenation. Okay? And this is the alveoli. Okay? And you know that in the alveoli, that's where we have more amount of oxygen. Okay? So, this is the deoxygenated blood. And this deoxygenated blood, it is rich in carbon dioxide. Okay? It has more concentration of carbon dioxide. So, this carbon dioxide is going into this alveoli. Okay? And the oxygen, which we are saying in red, the oxygen is going to diffuse in. Okay? And then blood will become oxygenated so this uh, blood which is oxygenated it will be taken by the pulmonary vein back to the heart okay and enter into this left atrium and it will pass through these valves which we are calling as the mitral valve into the left ventricle this left ventricle it contracts and pumps blood out into this systemic circulation Okay, so this is the normal physiology or the name of the normal flow of the heart. Okay, so now we are saying that due or because of those predisposing factors, okay, because of those predisposing factors, let's say, for example, we said that valvular, uh, valvular disorders actually causes eh, congestive cardiac failure. So let us say that if you have aortic stenosis, okay, this valve it's not opening okay this valve due to some reasons it's not opening there is stenosis at this iota valve so if there is stenosis if there is aortic stenosis meaning that the blood it will actually fail this left ventricle it's going to fail to pump blood out into this systemic circulation okay and then blood is going to build up in this left ventricle and once blood builds up into this left ventricle is that blood it will start going back again to the uh, pulmonary uh, vein okay so because of stenosis no matter how many times or no matter how much this uh, myocardium which will contract it is going to fail to pump blood out as a result this blood is going to build up into this left ventricle and it will start going back because this is going to fill up and blood will start going back into this which we are calling as the right or uh, the left atrium now i'm confusing the left and the right and blood will start going back into this left atrium okay once blood again fills up into this left atrium this left atrium is going to become full okay and when this left ventricle is failing we are saying that the patient has left-sided heart failure okay left-sided heart failure so this blood to start going back into the pulmonary veins okay blood start going back into the pulmonary veins so there will be more blood more there will be increased pressure in this pulmonary vein because of backflow of blood so once this blood is going back the blood is going to build up in the in the lungs okay and if the blood builds up in the lungs meaning that there'll be increased capillary permeability okay if there is increased capillary permeability blood to uh, this uh, fluid to start look uh, leaking into the interstitial spaces okay fluid to start leaking into the interstitial spaces as well as in the alveoli okay and once fluid builds up here, it will lead to coughing, meaning that the patient will start coughing. There will also be pulmonary edema. And these are the signs that will tell you to say the patient has the left-sided heart failure. Okay? These are the signs that will tell you to say the patient has got the left-sided heart failure. Okay? What else? What if this myocardium, we say that if there is coronary artery disease, then the coronary arteries are not receiving enough blood, meaning that this myocardium is going to undergo ischemia and it's going to atrophy. So when this myocardium, it is thick on this left side because this left side, it pumps blood to the systemic circulation. So if this atrophies, meaning it's, it won't have the enough strength to contract the left ventricle and pumps blood out. As a result, there will be backflow of blood into the pulmonary veins. 
so when blood builds up into these pulmonary veins and back to the lungs it will it is going to cause increased capillary permeability and that fluid it will start leaking from the intravascular compartment into the interstitial as well as in the alveoli leading to uh, coughing because of irritation of blood in the alveolar wall as well as there will be pulmonary edema not so not just that the blood to start also going back it's in green color going back into this which we are calling as the pulmonary artery so the blood it starts going back into the pulmonary artery and you know that the right ventricle it's pumping blood to the lungs now blood will start going back again so what is happening this is dangerous for the patient okay that's why we are saying that this left-sided heart failure is going to cause right-sided heart failure so now there will be failure of this ventricle to actually empty blood into the lung to the lungs okay so this ventricle the right the right ventricle is going to fail to empty the blood to the lungs as a result of that blood it will also start going back into this which we are calling as the right atrium okay blood will start going back into the veins and once blood goes back into the veins it is that the veins they will actually be stasis okay meaning that there will be stasis of blood in the veins and build up of blood in the peripherals okay which will lead to peripheral edema as well as uh, hepatomegaly the liver it's going to enlarge because of backflow of blood okay so what are we saying just a quick review we are saying that if there is any problem maybe to this mitral valve the stenosis here okay this mitral valve the stenosis meaning that blood is going to fill up in this left atrium and when this left atrium becomes filled with blood no matter how much it can contract it won't be able to empty the blood as well the blood's going to start going back to into this pulmonary vein once blood starts going back into this pulmonary vein, the blood is going to build up. There will be increased capillary permeability in the lungs. And if there is increased capillary permeability, fluid will start leaking into these interstitial spaces as well as in the alveoli, leading to pulmonary edema as well as coughing because of irritation of fluid in the alveoli. In the alveoli, we don't have any fluid. So if fluid starts going inside here, the patient will start coughing because of the irritation and this blood it will also get back to uh, to the right side of the heart through the pulmonary what artery so this blood start going back through the pulmonary artery back to the heart it passes through the uh, the pulmonary valve into this right ventricle this right ventricle it's pumping blood to the lungs now blood is coming back what is going to happen this right ventricle it is going to fail to empty the blood as a result of that it's going to fill up and the blood will start going back as well into this right atrium and once blood starts going back into this right atrium it will go back again uh, in the inf uh, superior vena cava and inferior vena cava and to the veins okay and that's why you are going to see that the patient who has uh, who have a uh, right-sided heart failure they have distended jugular vein why because of backflow of blood to the veins okay as the blood's going back uh, through the superior vena cava it will reach the jugular vein and the jugular vein of the patient is going to be distended okay the patient will also have uh, what we call as peripheral edemas because of stasis of blood okay there will be increased capillary permeability there will be leaking or leakage of fluid the patient is also going to have got what the patient will also develop uh, hepatomegaly so this is the pathophysiology of congestive cardiac failure uh, of the patient who actually 